so that goes back to the way that you push me because a lot of men or women would say, oh, baby, come it's home. Okay. It's Take okay. We'll reset tomorrow. And Jackie's like, no, dude, you're going to go. This is the law of numbers. This yeah. is how this works. You need to go back and you're going to, you're going to make a sell and then you're going to come home with a different mindset. Yep. And she sent me back into war instead of letting me go sleep on it for a night. Hello and welcome to the Jacqueline Elliott Show. Today we have a special guest, a very special guest, the Andy Elliott. Not <laughs> only is Andy Elliott my husband, he is also my business partner. He is the father of my children. And the pain in the ass. Dream husband. The dream husband. Yeah. Well, everybody knows who Andy Elliott is. He is the sensation, world number one sales trainer. And yeah, my wife loves to crack up jokes. Everybody loves the nipples, the short shorts. I wore them today just for you. Today just for me. Yeah. So anyway, welcome to the show. Yeah, but by the way, there would be no Andy Elliott if there wasn't Jacqueline Elliott. Because when, when you found me, I was an absolute project. And a lot of people, they, they find people that are doing great in life right now, and they're like, man, I want to be like them. But they have no idea that they're once a project. And the project has to have someone to believe in the project. And, uh, and that was you. So, so when you, when, let's go back to when we first met. Well, going back to the project thing. You were 24, I was 26. Yes, I was, I was 24, I was, I'm two years younger than you. But I've always been really addicted to projects, probably in the worst way possible. But I saw potential in you. Yeah. Very interesting, he was a little crazy. You were uh, all over the place, you know. He was a little womanizer, you know, at the time, I guess. I was like Little House on the Prairie. No, you weren't like House on the Prairie. You actually were like Wedding Crashers style guy. Like you were really bad. And everybody told me, hey, do not talk to Andy Elliott. He's crazy. Yeah, dude, what was up with everybody saying don't talk to me? But, you know, on the other hand, you know, I wasn't like, you know, scared, I guess. And I'm like, hey, I don't put up with anybody shit. I was very opinionated. I was very independent. So I was like, hey, you mess up one time, you don't get to see me again. I'm not going to cry for you if you do something to me. You just won't ever see me again. And you're like, oh shit, you got yeah. real serious. Yeah. So I think, I think everybody in life at some point, they find <laughs> that person that kind of gets them in check. Right. Yeah. And, um, Jackie drew a hard line in the sand right when I got with her, which, which by the way, Jackie was super cool. I mean, when I first met you, yeah. you know, you were my best friend. I was like, oh my gosh, she's super cool. You know, I didn't want you to leave, you know, like we were doing work, we were doing all that. Then after work, we'd hang out. And then I remember I was like, man, why don't you just stay, you know, tonight, you know, why, why don't you stay again? And, and you never let me go home. Well, like a year and a half. Yeah, a year and like a half. You kept my... an empty apartment and you stayed with me every night. But I remember the first thing that you said, you know, you said, you know, like there's, there's going to be a line that we don't cross. Right. Mm -hmm. And I always cross those lines, you know previously. what I mean? Yeah, previously. Yes. But because I was crazy and there was actually nothing worth having to not cross the line. And by being raised, you know, without a mom, women obviously being great moms teach their kids to be good. Uh, that was never taught. So I was raised by guys and raised by kids. So I'm doing well in business, or at least I think I am. I'm making money, young salesman, hustling, yeah. um, have lots of girlfriends. And then I meet you and I'm like, dude, like, oh my gosh. And then that was really the first time I think that I found love, yeah. right? Well, you also were attracted to the girls that you had to really take care of, I think, at that time. Mm. Like, we were pretty much equals. Like, I worked, I had my my own money, I had homes, I had properties, I had my own yeah, cars. Yeah, I think that, I that was different. It was a little different. It yeah. was a little different, but it was hard for me, too, because I was stubborn. I had my own opinions. I didn't put up with anybody's shit, and I didn't feel like I needed a man. So there was a, it was a big learning curve for both of us in, in that sense, but yeah. That line was really, 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 really marked really hard yeah. in the sand, and there was not anything Well, but when you called the shot, I actually listened. And for the first time in my life, I want to tell you I listened, and I think that was some of the best things that I ever did. So if you ever find someone that's worth changing for, change with that person, dude. And I'm telling you, life gets pretty amazing, um, you know, pretty quick. A lot of people always ask me, they say, you know, Andy, how, how do you, how do you, how do I get my wife to be successful like you? Just like you always have guys ask, like, how do I get my wife to support Right. you know, me, like you support yeah. Andy. That's a, that's a big question that I get asked all the time. Well, but going back to like what we were talking about too, because a lot of people are like, hey, you know, I, 
there's a there's a fine line between like really saying what you want and drawing that hard line like it, it has to come from first somebody respect you respecting and loving yourself and really giving yourself value mm. in order for the other person to really see that because a lot of times in relationships i think a lot of uh, i see a lot of women or a lot of men in this case are like well i got to do this for this person all that i think that you saw that i valued myself at the time yeah and you were like hey this is this is different this is i can't really mess around because she loves herself and she values herself too much that if i screw up i'm going to screw the whole thing up. yeah i think that's true I, I found a lot of people that needed me they needed you and really like i would be good without them not being negatively but like you know like i'm good you know and then when i met you i was like damn dude you know she's killing it she's doing good you know like when i was with you my life was better and then i realized and this is where i think that people always ask like how do i make my wife you know be like you or how do my girl be, be like you one of the big things is 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 that you would have been successful and had a great life even if i wasn't around and so that was one of the things that I knew that like, dude, she's going to be good, like either way, like she's going to be great. So like, I think that together we would both be great. So like I found value in you. So I think like if anybody would take any relationship advice, it's that, you know, work on yourself, become great. And that way, whoever you run into or whoever you're with, they're like, and if you're with somebody now, you just change, become that person. That person should help you become a better person. Yeah. I was or like, enhance who I became you better are. be just being with you. So and a lot of people are, I'm going to be happy once I move into this house. I'm going to be happy when I find this person. I'm going to be happy once I graduate yeah, college, happen. or I'm going to be happy when I get this job, or I'm going to be happy when I move to the city. You know, you're never going to find happiness in what you have. And I think that that's something that I did. I was fine on my own yeah. and I was I, I was content being a loner and I was content being around people because I was very confident in that sense yeah. so when we found each other it was like hey you know what you were your way you had your qualities and you you're always a great salesman and you you've always been good in business you were just a little all over the place and I was addicted to projects and I'm still that way I like doing projects like even in business if I see something that needs attention I'm gonna go and dive into it and, and do that that's just my personality but it's part of that build. I don't think I would have been the girl that would have been married some rich doctor and been like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm yeah. going to go and get taken yeah. care of. That wouldn't have been the same. I don't think I would have respected him the same way I respect you if that would have been the case, you know? Well, so. well plus, I think relationships thrive whenever people constantly are keeping, you know, like newness and turmoil and crazy stuff in their life. And most people want to get all that out and they're like, oh, we're tired of chasing, you know, let's just relax. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's when people die and decay, right? Like me and you always stay wound up you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because we're always putting a new project. It's like and we're so competitive. Yeah, like we're massively competitive. competitive, but we're competitive in a good way. Yeah, we're a team. Of... We're a team competing for the same thing, but it's 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 almost become a competition to like who's crazier. But we do communicate and make sure that the stuff that we go crazy on, it's things that we align with in life. Yeah, the you stuff know what that's going to help us grow in a healthy way. I guess that's yeah. something that's going to that's going to allow us to push to another level, and that's why I think that we're. We grow not only in business, but in marriage and as parents and all that, because you really grow when you push yourself to that next level. So we don't allow ourselves to get comfortable in that sense. Now, going back to your question that you said, hey, how do I get you know, my wife to support me? I'm going to kind of flip it around on mm -hmm. you. Okay. Let's and I'll go. Go, I'll go ahead and answer that question yeah. later. But what do you think that has happened in our relationship that has caused me to help you basically know that you can achieve certain things or what has helped you the most in me as a role as a as a wife and as a mom or whatever well i mean there's a lot of things but like you supporting me but or, what does that mean because a lot of people say support oh, oh well well number one you you've always told me what you see in me and i like that i think mm -hmm. that that's something that's not not done anymore i think that a lot of people just expect like because we're together like you support me but that's good like you'll always tell me like, this is what I see in you. And to me, like, as a man, I'm speaking from a man's side, I'm sure it works the same for women. But, like, when you tell me what you see in me, it makes me want to go viciously attack. Because I believe in myself now. You've made me aware of something that I was thinking and might be wondering. And even if the whole world tells me that I'm worth it, or if I say I'm worth it, if you tell me I'm worth it, obviously, I got with you, I got married to you. So, comes like, your opinion, now. yeah, it comes totally different. So, I think that a lot of women... And a lot of men don't tell the other side what they see in them. Mm -hmm. And all we do is, is once we get in a relationship, we just tear each other down. You know, we become comfortable. We um, get stagnant. 
it's like you said it like it's like two people living under the same roof in the same bed miles apart mm -hmm. they get disconnected they become partners mm -hmm. and they stop thriving it's together it's like a business relationship yeah. there's no there's no intimacy there's no no growth in those yeah, ways yeah when you tell me how you see me like if it's like you you say that I'm powerful, you say that I'm capable, you say I can do this. Like, dude, like you almost gave me permission to go to war and I could just tear a whole country down. Well, it's interesting because a lot of people don't know how to do that, though. So the way that we've kind of done that, I think a lot of people don't really understand. I'm not like, hey, honey, you're great. Like you're, you, you can go, achieve, you know, do anything you want in life. I mean, you're, you're power. I don't I don't really do that, though. Like. I think we start with the dirty and you actually go and attack people and push them to grow in a certain way because you got pissed off first, right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of pissed you off in that sense, but I have a certain meaning behind what I'm doing to build you up after. Yeah, like, think, hey, I, if you come home and you say, hey, you know what? I'm not good at this, for example. I'm not good at, you know, whatever. I can't overcome this or I, I can't close this client on this. I'm not good at that or these people are this. I like won't allow you to talk that way. And we talk about yeah. like, hey, you do know how to do this. We just need a practice. And then I basically make you see your future you in the sense that, hey, if you were to overcome this and that, imagine where that's going to take you. And then you kind of build on that. And then you believe it before you actually go and do it. Yeah. But first, well, it comes to I think there's two parts to your mm -hmm. answer. I think that one is like the way that you make me feel when you build me up, right? right? Mm -hmm. But then I think the other is when you don't let me be weak and you don't let me say negative things and you don't right. let me say like I can't or something like that or give up. Right. Um, so this is a big deal. Like So so Jack, I'm going to go back to when we're in our 20s, right? Mm -hmm. I remember one night um, I was selling cars. I was in the automotive industry when I'm younger and I'm selling cars and I'm driving home and I left about an hour and a half before the end of the day, right? So I got to work at like 8 in the morning. It's like 6.30 at night. And I'm just, you know, I'm just beat, man. I've been through like seven customers. None of them can buy. It's just a grind, right? Like negative equity, upside down. I'm not going to buy. Not don't have the right car. It's like everything was going against me. So some seven in, I couldn't close a deal, which is like obviously not like me. So I'm like, okay, dude, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get out of here. I'll come back tomorrow, right? And I remember calling on the way home and I'm like, I'm on my way home. And she's like, how many did you sell today? Because she's always asking, you know, she's in sales. She's like, how many did you sell today? I'm like, zero. And she's like, okay, turn back around. And I'm like, I'm not turning back around. She goes, no, you're going to come home. You're going to have a shitty attitude. You're going to be negative and you're going to bring that shit home. I'm not going to have you bring that shit home. Okay. So go back to work, go find a car deal and then come home. And I remember I was pissed um, because we're fighting because we're fighting about it. And she's like, I'm not joking. And I hate it because she goes, I'm not joking turn around. I'm dead serious. Like if you come home, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, what is your problem? And she's like, <laughs> go sell a car and then come home. That way, at least you'll bring a good attitude to the house because I can already tell I don't like the attitude you have. And dude, I'm like, dude, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> but I turn back around and I go back to work and everybody's like, oh, you came back to work. And that even pissed me off more. Okay. And then anyways, I, uh, seconds later ran into a couple that literally said, we're here to buy two cars. And I walked right out there, found two cars, boom, wrote them both up, sold them, took them to the finance office. An hour later, I'm leaving work. And I'm like, I don't want to tell her. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I already, see, she's already, she's already going to do what she's doing now. And I was like, I was like, hey, babe, I'm on my way home. She's like, you sold something, didn't you? Well, he said, and, hey, baby. Yeah. Hey, baby. And I'm I like, know that that's like. I'm like, no. She's like, you did sell something. Tell me the truth. Tell me. And I'm like, hey, don't treat me like a baby. And she's like, <laughs> tell me the truth. Did you, did you sell something? I know you did. Tell me what you sold. And I said, well, I sold, I sold two. And immediately she's like, I told you. And I'm like, damn it. Why are you always freaking right? And, uh, and anyways, but, but so that goes back to the way that you push me. Cause a lot of men or women would say, oh baby, come it's home. Okay. It's Take okay. We'll reset tomorrow. And Jackie's like, no dude. You're going to go, this is the law of numbers. This yeah. is how this works. You need to go back and you're going to, you're going to make a sell and then you're going to come home with a different mindset. Yep. And she sent me back into war instead of letting me go sleep on it for a night. And I've done that several times. I mean, a lot of times, Thousands. But, but it's, it's been even like, if I know that he needs to go to the gym, like I could tell when his yeah. attitude is a certain way, he just needs to go to the gym. Like, Hey, don't come home. 
don't, you know, just go to the gym for 30 minutes and then come home because yeah. I already know that you're going to give us leftovers. I already know you're not going to be in the right mood. I already know how this is going to go. So just go. And then every time he goes to the gym or every time he went and made that extra call and something happened, I knew that the kids and I would get. Yeah, I think I think I, I think a, a secret deal with Jackie is that, you know, like um, exercising is a vitamin um, to me that gets me mentally healthy. I think I think it works for her, too. I mean. It could work for all of us, but she may not, she may not go to that, but that's, that's, and, and she is very in good shape, but like, that's my go-to. Like whenever I'm having a tough time or whenever I'm trying to process something, like sometimes I could say things that I regret later, or I might do something that I'm not, like, not normally, like that's not like me. Right. So Jackie understands when she sees these things and she'll say, Hey, you need to go to the gym. And, know and then, you more than you know yeah, yourself. But, but I always will say, no, I'm not going to the gym. I don't need to go because I'll try to fight it, right? Because it's got to be my idea, right? And she's like, no, you're going to go to the gym and I will see you in an hour. Just and go you put your phone you do really want to go to the gym. You're yeah, just yeah, trying I do to want be, to, but I'm you're just, just trying to be I'm just trying to, to, difficult. I, I need like a, you really win. Yeah, I know. Well, this uh, but this is what we do. It's always a competitive game, right? Like it's got to be my idea. It's got to be her idea. Um, but we actually most of the time it's my idea, though. Yeah, but we actually really <laughs> though understand each other really well, and she knows what I need, and I know that she knows. So I'll leave. I'll go to the gym, and I'll come back an hour later, and you know we don't even talk about anything anymore. Like it's good. Like it's, it's good. totally cool. Yeah, and we don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to. Yeah, because I was probably just acting like a little baby. You, know you just what I mean? got the little, that little, that little smile that comes out. Yeah, from you. yeah. Yeah. Well, see, I think it's important that you understand like what, what your spouse needs mm -hmm. um, when they need it, and I think it's super important that you identify. It. Remember, your whole goal of being together is to really make each other better and protect each other. Right. And people stay together. You gotta trust each other to do that. Yeah. Though. Well, they forget that, right? Because honestly, dude, if we're together every day, we've been together seventeen years. There's a time at some point where you're like, you know, like you just start being bad to each other, like for no reason. Like people do this all the time. Well, you get comfortable. You quit trying to impress each other. You don't keep it new anymore. You just, instead of giving your spouse or the person that's next, next to you your best, you basically are comfortable. You give them your worst, but you're giving your clients and everybody else your yeah. best. If you're pissed off, you're not going to start yelling at your clients or you're not going to start yelling at your coworkers. You're going to co go home and yell at your wife and kids or husband. Yeah. And that's what usually happens, but it really is backwards. Yeah. I mean, it really is that well, way. One of the things that Jackie always says, she, she She's good. By the way, Jackie's extremely good at sales. She's very good at closing. She's very good at being a leader. She runs our whole company. Who closed you? Um, no, she closed me. But really, I say I closed her because I think she's hotter than me. So I'm like, I, I really, it's like her closing me. I mean, I was easy to close. I was a loss. No, he closed. He definitely closed me because you were definitely not my type. Yeah, I was definitely a loss. <laughs> but but I, I want to tell you guys something that what Jackie's really good at um, on, on a lot of things is really getting me to change my perspective, you know, getting me to, to shift out of my current state of how I'm thinking. Um, she gets me to see stuff differently. And I think this is super important. Um, if you want to really protect your marriage, you need to know how to use analogies um, to, to allow each other to see things the same. And I'm gonna give you an example. So let's say that me and her are getting into it, right? And I'm like, no, dude, like, like, you know, like, this is stupid, you know, or Maybe somebody um, call somebody a name or something, right? Like, you know, you're just like out of like the love state now. Like we're getting to where we're getting hateful, right? And every couple will get to this at some point in their life in some way. You don't have to yell to do it. You just, you just do it and you're, you're not being you, right? Yeah, you're just um, trying to win. Yeah, you're just trying to win. And you're trying to hurt the other person because you're hurt, right? And um, Jackie always says, what would you do if someone came and said what you just said to me? If we were at a gas station right now. And a guy walked by and he just said what you said to me, what would you do to him? And I'm like, I'd kill him. And she's like, why is it okay for you to hurt me when you love me, I married you, I'm with you, and it's, 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 not, it's not okay for a stranger to hurt me? Like, you should care about me more than a stranger, right? And I'm like, damn, I don't like that. You know, like, I don't like when you tell me things that make me understand that what I'm doing to you is not good. And, and by the way, she's good with words, which really in our company, that's what we teach is like how to be a master communicator, like how to yeah. communicate. And, 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 but instead of, you know, you saying, Hey, don't talk to me that way. She's like, how would you feel if a stranger at a gas station, we were getting gas, they came by and they said that to me. Well, just, just How would you feel if they mm -hmm. said that to me? And I'm like, damn, you know, like I would kill that guy, you know? So 
but you can even like not even the gas station it happens in families like it could be the mother-in-law that's telling the mm -hmm. daughter something and then the husband gets so pissed off because she's telling them something and then they're like they don't want to talk to them anymore mm -hmm. but then you go and then the husband and the wife are saying the same thing to each other mm -hmm. but they're so pissed that the mother-in-law said it and they're saying the same exact thing but here it's okay in there when it's outside sources it's not okay and then they develop a hatred that lasts for the rest of the relationship that they can't get over like it's a double standard that's what we call it a double standard so you have to really think in yeah. that sense you know well and i think one of the ways that our relationship has also always stayed stayed like pretty strong really mm -hmm. powerful mm -hmm. is um you know jackie made a rule early on which was good you know some of you right now it's not too late to adopt this rule but jackie made a rule early on where it was like we're not ever going to speak negatively about each other, okay, to our, to our family or to our friends or to anybody. Yeah, to my parents especially, you know, but, but, or but anybody. Really, but really anybody, like not even your best friend. I mean, like, because I'm just giving you an example. If she, if she had, Jackie had a best friend and me and her got in a fight and then I said something to her and then she went and told her best friend, her best friend's never going to forget what I said to her. Yeah. Or then you're happy later on. Yeah, yeah. And then you're holding hands and kissing. Like, you're oh, great. look, remember when he did this to her? They're stupid, you know. Yeah, they, they're, they'll never they're, they're never going to support the relationship anymore. Especially and your parents, because your parents have a different kind of love for you. So they always, like, think that they're protecting you in a sense, but they never forget. Well, Just think about if you had a, a daughter, and then the boyfriend mm -hmm. calls her some, a name or does something to her. Yeah, you're never like, going to forget You're never going to forget the guy, because she's your freaking daughter. Like, that's yeah. the thing. So. Well, and that's the deal. Like, people, once you tell somebody about something that happened with them, that somebody they love, like they'll never forget it, right? And then you know time's gonna pass, it's always gonna get better, right? Because people have fights, that's a part of life. Well, what you say during that time with that fight will determine how those people support your relationship forever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we've never told anybody about any of the fights that we've had, so a lot of the people, they just envision that we just have this greatest life ever, when really me and Jackie probably fight more than anyone in the world but we fight most of the time about how to level up, how to become better people. And by the way, we have five minute fights. Like, like most and people I, I, fight I think a lot days. of people misinterpret fights. So yeah, like yeah. fights, Talk we don't fight. Talk about a definition the, of a fight. Well, fighting is like not agreeing with something and voicing your opinion. Mm -hmm. We believe in fighting when you fight fair mm -hmm. and when you fight like not to win, but to actually have some type of resolution yep. and to grow in a way because then you can grow and resent people and then you can go uh, later on in life. You don't even realize what you're resenting each other about mm -hmm. because you didn't have those conversations. Those are conversations. These fights that we're talking about are things that allow each other to grow, to voice. A lot yeah. of people don't say they don't like something because they just don't want to avoid that and it always surfaces later you don't really get to know the person that you're next to and whether you like it or not it's always going to be something that's going to come out or be affected at later because it's just digging in it's digging mm -hmm. in and digging in and you have little tiny little paper cuts and they just keep they just keep adding on and then you don't even know how to identify why you can't really even stare and look at each other anymore because mm -hmm. you have all of these like little things that bothered you throughout the time time we speak to so many different couples that have been together for 20 30 40 years yeah, i remember we were in a couple's mastermind right me and you were putting on uh we do these couple mastermind uh every six months about how to become badass power couples right mm -hmm. and i remember we had this couple sitting right over here and they've been together like 30 years yeah, right yeah. um and you know you could tell they were separated. Uh, I don't mean like in life, but they were kind of not sitting next to each other. They were listening. And by the end of the day, they had leaned into each other. They were holding each other's hand, which they really could tell they hadn't done in a long time. Um, but the guy stood up and he goes, I realize what happened. He's like, number one, like I never let her be heard. Like every time she would say something that was maybe bothering her, I would not intentionally, but I would shut her up because I thought she was nagging me or doing this or doing that. So one day she just quit voicing her opinion. She quit talking. And that's what Jackie talks about death by a thousand paper cuts. It was like inside, like it was this paper cutting your heart that she couldn't speak her mind. She couldn't talk openly um, because they would fight about it. So she felt like she couldn't be heard after 30 years of that. They're ready to get a divorce because they and not for any specific reason like somebody went out and cheated on somebody yeah, they didn't really know they why just, they didn't know why they were resenting they were, each other yeah, they couldn't they, even identify they don't fight about anything they can't they can't they can't even talk about it because there's just things that they can't talk about i mean how many people right now they literally can't talk about certain topics because there's always a fight 
Well, those fights, like Jackie talks about fighting for resolution. It's like, dude, like I just need to make sure that she's heard. And then I need to be like, okay, I understand that. And then if she is everything to me, then I need to be like, hey, well then how can I, we, how can we be better together? Like, how can I do better for that? And I want her to know also when I'm bothered that I want her to listen to me and then be like, you know, and by the way, like a lot of people don't talk about stuff like this. Um, but people don't have business problems, they have relationship problems. People have problems at home, they have personal problems, and it's what destroys their business. I mean, you gotta realize, everybody at some point is gonna do business with, or they're gonna do life, somebody at some point is gonna do life with someone. And when you do life with that someone, you're gonna have dreams, you're gonna have goals, you're gonna go chase, and you guys are gonna build something. And when you split, you're gonna give it all back. Mm -hmm. Okay? So your goal is when you find someone, that relationship is actually more important than the business you're building. Because it's the business that you're building, the second that it gets as great as it gets, but this doesn't get good, that goes down. Well, it should be growing at the same time. And that's why we talk yeah. about get, having it all, right? Like mm -hmm. you can be good in your marriage and that's gonna grow. And also in business, it's gonna grow. As a parent, you should be able to grow. But a lot of times society teaches you to be one dimensional and they say, hey, you know, you have to take advantage of the times. This is a time where you have to chase it all in your business and, and you leave your family and they're gonna mm -hmm. be fine. And, and the other people are like, no, I'm gonna take care of my family. And you can do all of it at the same time. Yeah, people it's the don't only way it's that. sustainable though. It's yeah. the only way it's sustainable because if you let something go it's always going to break mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that we've worked on in a lot you know and, yeah. and it's all it's always like those conversations like there was a time where I was like really really focused on business and a time that I wanted to spend time with the kids but I realized that if I didn't we didn't have conversations and he couldn't talk about his wins in business with me or he couldn't talk about certain things that he was doing and we only had conversations that had to do with the kids for mm -hmm. example I felt like I wasn't growing and we needed to grow together so whether you work with the work together or not because we obviously work together but mm -hmm. a lot of people you know don't work together but they still need to be able to have these conversations so you can actually push each other hold each other accountable mm -hmm. grow in certain ways whether it's a stay-at-home mom like she needs to feel like she's growing in that or a teacher or whatever she needs to feel and she's growing in that and he needs to be able to communicate with her and a lot of men don't think that they can speak to their wives about business because they don't think they understand yeah. well they understand more than you think but the thing is yeah. that sometimes in the beginning any change is difficult. So, well, she's not really interested. Start asking her certain questions and asking her for help or opinions on certain things about who you're hiring, for example, and she will give you her, her opinion right away and then she'll ask you about work. There's certain ways to do it yeah. to be able to you know, relate in certain things. But if you don't talk about certain things about work or anything and you feel like you have to grow on your own, then she won't hold you accountable when she comes home and you didn't make that sale with that customer and then you bring home those leftovers or anything like that. Like you have to be able to talk about everything because it's ultimately, you're mm -hmm. supposed to be best friends. Yeah, and women have really good intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned um, that Jackie, getting her involved in things that I'm doing helps me make the best decisions. And a lot of the times I look back at all the money that we've lost, all the time that we've wasted on certain deals and stuff, all were my fault because I didn't have her a part of these meetings. You know, I learned this and I'm just giving an example, whether she was in business and working or whether this time she was at home taking care of the kids and running the house, right? Um, all those times I should have had you involved because again, women do understand way more than you think and once I involved her, her goal ultimately is to protect us, mm -hmm. to protect me, to make sure that, yes, we want to do things that advance our life, but also if we do something that doesn't advance our life, but we think that it does, and then it costs us two years of going backwards because it was a bad mistake, number one, it not only just affects me, it affects the kids, it affects her, it affects everybody. So, you know, getting Jacqueline involved in conversations, I started to learn that she was better at negotiating deals than me and... I close big deals. Well, and, but I want to say something. <laughs> a lot of people, when they were talking to me and she was present, they spoke to me differently than they would if she wasn't there. See, because now they're not only trying to just sell me, because we're salespeople, right? They're not only trying to sell me on why I need to do it. Jackie's also asking difficult questions. Right, questions that maybe I don't I say not have the courage to ask, but that seem awkward to ask. And Jackie's like, well, why, why are you doing this? Or why would you want to do this? And then those people have to stop and explain. And then I get a chance well, to witness as an outsider. You're always trying to 
convince people to see things the way you want them to see things. Mm -hmm. And because you're so good at what you do, you're almost like telling them, it's like almost if you're hiring somebody, hey, you're a hard worker, oh, and you show up, and you, you do this, and you always wanna win, Are you co you're coachable, right? And you're like this, and I'm like, oh, yeah. well, this person didn't say that, you said that. Yeah. So it's like, you're, you're such a good salesman that you want, you, you see the good in everybody, and mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing to have. But at the same time, you also have to see what that person is really like, mm -hmm. so we can see, you know, their heart yeah, yeah who, their, who they are yeah, yeah exactly yeah and, and i love that you are always cool with asking the difficult questions because yeah. you know jackie always says you learn with what like you learn what you have with somebody once you piss them off right like once somebody gets upset or they get triggered right the real them comes um out. yeah the, the real them come comes out and i've had people that have brought deals to the table with me that like look amazing and i probably would have said yes to them like really quick but I'm always now because we got this new process. I'm like, hey, you know, obviously I need to talk this with my wife, and I need you to understand she's my business business partner. She's everything to me. Um, she's going to be here with us because I want her to fully understand everything because I know she's going to have questions too. And then I let Jacqueline just hear them out, understand it. She always steps about two steps back. She processes it, and then she'll start asking questions. And me. You know, I'm like, let's close the deal. And Jackie's like, no, let's understand the deal. And then she'll ask questions. And as difficult she's asking him, yeah. difficult ones, I'm starting to listen. And I'm like, man, why didn't I ask that question? Right? Like, why didn't I ask that question? Like, that's a pretty damn good question. Like, that's crazy. So I just want to tell you that, you know, bringing your spouse in, especially on business stuff, even if they're not um, really understanding a lot about the business, which Jackie does. Um, I could imagine that people will treat that conversation differently with your wife there. Plus you having your wife there, it allows them to really explain and understand that your family is important to you and understand your values and standards. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody that comes in here, the first thing they say is, Andy, I know that you don't run the business. Where's Jackie? And that's the truth. They always want to talk to you. And I love that because if Jackie is on board with it, then obviously I'm on board with it. And it's not because she's my wife. Like everybody needs to understand that. Like it's not like oh well, yeah. Well, we make mistakes together too, in the sense that we we Fact. have wins together well, and we, we make mistakes together. So if we both made yeah, a decision, yeah. If we screw up together, then yeah. at least we both made the decision together, and we both are okay with the screw up. We both fix the problem together. Mm -hmm. But if I go out of my way and I'm like, hey babe, I just made this deal today, and she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh, I made this deal. Trust me, babe, it's going to be good. Well, number one, not talking about just her, but like, is your spouse going to support that? Like they weren't a part of the decision. They weren't there when the decision's made. And I understand it. It'd be like her walking in going, hey, dude, I just made a deal with this guy. And I'm like, cool, like what deal? Like what happened? Like if I don't know enough information about it, like I can't support it with my heart because I wasn't there doing it. So now if the deal doesn't go right, then I'm already like, well, I want a part of that. Immediately, that's what I'm gonna say. Well, I want a part of that. I don't know anything about that. You know, I wasn't there when that happened. And that's why, like, you got to understand that I think one of the ways that have made us really successful is that we have conversations and we communicate, we make deals together. Um, and then also, like, you know, it's crazy, but, like, we, we tell each other the truth, whether Who it's talks hurtful. more than the other? I'm a talker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a super talker. Obviously, yes, he's a talker for sure. But Jackie's an action taker. <laughs> you know, she'll, she'll be, I, I call her the velvet hammer. Look, by the way, she's hot blooded Mexican. She'll bring, very the, Mexican. she'll bring the hammer. Okay. But Jackie's more of an executioner. She'll sit back, listen, she'll understand, she'll process it. And then if we make a decision, we know it's going to get done. Like it'll get done at light speed pace. Like we built our business and, um, super fast because we execute on everything. We've moved into multiple buildings, but this one we're in now, this huge building, like we, we built this out in 90 days and the, you know, the construction company said it was going to take a year and a half. You know, it's what happens when Jackie gets involved. She literally executes at a level. Now I remember when we were building this building, I remember coming in here, it was every night she was here till 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning. Now a lot of us were here until midnight but Jackie's unhuman. She's here till 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning. She's not, you know, she's unhuman at this point. She's not man. She's not woman. She's unhuman. She's literally working, scrubbing, cleaning, epoxying the floors. She had these. I'm gas, the janitor. She had these gas masks on. 
you know, the CEO of the company is not supposed to be putting on epoxy at 3 a.m. in the morning with gas mask on, literally. Well, the first round of the floors, I didn't put gas mask on. Never done a no, drug in my life. No, she was high as a kite. But I was doing that. And I did it barefoot the first time. I didn't even know what that stuff was. Yeah, yeah you But maybe home, that's why I was able to stay up till four o'clock in the morning because I was high as shit. Yeah, dude, Jackie's never been high. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I was smoking weed and Jackie would sit there and watch when I would just laugh and crack up. And, and That was one time that you did yeah, that. Yeah, that was one time, but this is I when we're in our 20s. When was two, you uh, well, I was in my 20s and you I was, did it one time and I was like, getting high. You're not doing that in front of me again. Yeah, well, that's but, the hard but line she, again. But, but again, <laughs> she watched me crack up and laugh and roll on the floor, and we were all just cracking up. And Jackie's like, never done a drug in my life. But the day that we got epoxied, or you were epoxying the floor and all the chemicals, you, I, dude, you could smell it from the road. Yeah, you can. But we walked in this room, and dude, Jackie is high as a kite in here, literally dumping I was like chemicals everywhere. On the yeah, floor, yeah, it was I... the craziest stuff. I still got videos of it, and like, it was crazy. Like, you were literally sliding back and forth. Never in here. smoked a cigarette. I mm -mm. mean, I was raised in a place where like there were drugs and alcohol everywhere. Yeah. Really bad place. And I saw it all over, but I never, never had a drug, never tried it, never. Well, you got it. high off epoxy. And I guess I'm the not. day Jacqueline got high. My system's not as clean as it used yeah. to be. But the cool thing about it is, is as you go through these experiences, these build. Any time that we've made a goal together, that we've planned together, we've been able to do almost unhuman things. And a lot of people ask us, like, how have we scaled our business so fast? How do we grow so quick? How do we create this culture? How do we build this team? You know, how do we live by these high standards? You know, especially like how, we, where we've came from, like we've recreated like so many times and like she's re recreated like every day we're like a different person, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, our, our threshold of stress as, as in a marriage, as in individuals, as in our company, like with our family, like we, like we can handle massive amounts of stress and we just continue to operate. And I don't want to say it's like a negative stress, but like, it's a good, it's a, like, it's good stress. Like we process it really good because we communicate so well together. So talk about, you've said a lot of good things about like our relationship and mm -hmm. a lot of different things. And obviously when yeah, let's get into some bad stuff, you just talk so much. I can't even get a word in with you. You just let's keep go. going. It's just like, it's crazy. Anyway, what about like something like bad that I've done to you? Like something that you're like, damn it. Like what's, now, and I know that you're probably going to say something that actually helped you grow and all this stuff. Maybe I, I have said some pretty hurtful mm. things like, hey, I learned to live without you when I was with the kids, things like that. Like, but like, talk about something that I've done to you that you don't like. Mm. How about that? Like, why don't we get into some of the nitty gritty stuff? Because I don't want to be like people to see us like we're, we're like the perfect couple that freaking all oh, is like all of well, this. Like we have our shit, but we work through stuff. And I do believe that we're stronger than most couples that are out there probably because we're so direct and we, we, we try to grow and we push ourselves and we're so competitive and all of that. And we're not fake in that sense, but I don't want people to think that we're like perfect. So mm -hmm. talk about something that I did that was not so perfect. Well, so one of the things that I, I tell Jacqueline is that, so I, I like to be built up, right? Like, you know, we got a lot of people in this world that are like, Hey Andy, you changed my life. You're amazing. You know, like, thank you. Cause that's what we do for a living. Like we just, we make people feel powerful and strong and we brainwash them to believe they can do anything. Well, it's super important to me that she doesn't make fun of me. Okay. Now this is just me because I, 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 I actually, I use her as a source of my power, right? So like, I've got haters all around the world. I mean, they're everywhere and they hate on me all the time. I'm really bad and, because I do make and, fun no, of them no, but, a lot. But, but, I but I love it. And these people, you know, like they, they just don't like themselves. You know what I'm saying? So that's why when they see me doing stuff that they could do themselves, but they don't have the courage to do it, they don't like me. Right, because I, I don't the think I could, I could get away with wearing short shorts and showing my nipples if that's what you're referring to. Well, see, to. but I tell Jackie all the time, I say, it's super important that what she tells me, you know what I'm saying, like, like I like that. And I don't need her to kiss my ass, but I do tell her a lot that I need her to build me up. Like, that's something that, you know, is important to me. And if she'll make fun of me or she'll run, you know, on about something, like, at the end of the day, like, it pisses me off. I don't like it. So if you're going to talk about something you do that I don't like, well, yeah. is, 
is is I do make fun of him a lot. Is and because you know it's well, like I, he gets but, a lot of he gets a lot of reinforcement by a lot of people. So I have see, to but, give him a lot of shit because see, but that's then what she he pushes thinks. people. He pushes people, you know, and, and gives but shit she to people. So I'm like defending all I those people. I care about reinforcement from other people when actually the reinforcement that I'm looking for is from my wife to say I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Good job staying you, right? In a world where people lose their identity and they who change. Rubs, who rubs whose feet? You don't rub my feet. You rub my feet. Well, the idea of it is, is, <laughs> is that we're going back to, you know, like this. So, so you'll You're understand. a really good husband. You rub my feet. I am a damn good husband. And he, you also load the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he helps, okay, so we make the bed and he does his side, I do my side. You know, we make the bed together in the mornings. We've done a lot of cool stuff like that, but it was a big process. It was a big process of, of getting to know that because he knew that was important to me. So you do do a lot of good things. Well, like now you know it's important to me, then I do a lot of things that are important to you. It's good for you to do things that are important to me. I do do a lot of things. Good, well, one of them though would be, I hate for, for the ladies out there. Him, yeah. No, for the ladies out there, is your man when you tell him that See, I like he's talking a about the stuff that nobody wants to talk no, about. No, no, no. But but this is the truth because a lot of women wish their guys were stronger, but at the end of the day, they don't they don't they don't build them up. Right. They don't they don't do that shit. And by the way, when baby, your muscles look so nice See, right now. Now we're talking. Oh yeah. See, if she wants to break the bank, if she wants to get, you know, something we've never had, that's exactly what she needs to do. And by the way, that right there, that is like, that's like coal that fuels the train. You know what if I'm you're doing it the right way. See, a lot of women well, do I it think to all... get something out of the husband. Well, See, I, I think... don't have to get anything out of you. Well, I give you everything anyway, so I think you should do it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I get... Why don't you tell him uh, that you lose your credit card every week and you're not allowed to hold one? Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't. And I, by the way, I don't need a credit card. I literally, when I go to the gas station, I'm like, I don't have money to get gas. Somebody meet me at the gas station. Because you lose them. Yeah. Lose them. I have to freaking cancel them like every other day when you have We them. all have weaknesses. That's okay? his weakness for sure. Yeah. But, but, I, but I would tell you that at the end of the day, like all the women, okay, all the men, I would tell you that you guys' job should be to build your partners up. It's true. At the end of the day, there's going to be a massive amount of people. It doesn't matter how many people believe in either one of you. What matters is do you guys both know how much that you believe in each other? Because there's going to be a lot of people that don't believe in you, and there's going to be a lot of people that do believe in you. But the question is, at the end of the day, not do who you... Who are you doing it for and who Yeah, like you? do you tell each other that you believe in you? And like I think that that right there is priceless. And okay, I think okay. if you do that okay, for Okay, enough, enough of the bad. Enough of the bad. You ready to get back to the good? Hey, you've asked for it. <laughs> you, you, I'm just telling you the truth. That is my weakness. I will get better at kissing your ass. Thank you, baby. Makes mm. me feel good. Okay. I like that. I will get better at kissing his ass. Next. <laughs> <laughs> what about with the kids? Like, obviously, we have the business. We have our relationship. I do believe we're marriage millionaires. We do think a lot alike, you know. Uh, and we, you know, we actually, I mean, people talk about finishing each other's sentences. Like sometimes like mm -hmm. we really think alike, like if he's going to talk about something, I'm like, damn, like I was just thinking that. It's yeah. Amazing. Me and her think the exact same yeah. things. But like, what about like with, when it comes to like the kids though, you know, how have we transitioned from like being parents? Like we've always been good parents to our yeah, kids. We've been great parents. But how, how have we gotten better over the years in managing business in you know, our, you know, relationship as a couple and then bringing the kids along and what type of example do you feel or what, what have been some challenges and some things that we've overcome over the years with our kids? Well, I, I think obviously kids are young, they're super resilient. And I think that the parents, the way that they operate about things, the kids see all that and that stuff that'll play out later in life. Some of the things that the kids have seen with us is that we're massive risk takers. Mm -hmm. Okay, one. And then number two, when we take risk, we always tell our kids and we explain to them why we're taking these yeah, risks. Yeah, we don't sugarcoat anything. Yeah, we tell them why we're taking the risks and we tell them uh, like, who's going to get affected by these risks yeah, like future expectations like like what we're doing this for all the people's lives are going to change and then also we explain to them what we see in them i think we tell our kids every day that they're the example and we tell our kids that they can become anything in life and we tell them that if mom and dad can't become it then really we're frauds to you and you can't become it either okay so like me and jackie are very clear with our kids that we have an obligation and a duty and 
and and we're tr trying and we will be the example for them to believe they can get whatever they want. We will do that for them. They will see in this lifetime that we will be legends. And only for the sole purpose to change a lot of other people's lives and to show them that they can also become legends and make that same impact. And I think that, you know, like that's a big deal. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a lot for our kids because they're, you know, they're eight, 10, 13. They're like, they've been watching us on this journey for the last couple yeah. of years and they are with us. We've made our kids speak on stage with us. We've made our kids, you know, I mean, go in front of thousands of people, overcome objections, do things just so we show other people that, Hey, what we demand from you, we do ourselves, And also we our want kids. our children to do. Yeah. And they're like little savages, they're going to smoke us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're definitely going to smoke us. But we are setting the tone for them. We're, we're, we show them like we're competitive as it is mm -hmm. as a couple, like in everything that we do. We can go to an arcade game and shoot basketball. Oh, yeah. Dude, if, if you want to talk about like competitiveness, we'll go play basketball. And like she's so good at yes. machine basketball. I don't understand it. Yes. But I will tell you. Who's better? Huh? She wins every time. What about if we play like air hockey? She wins every time. I don't know. What understand. if we play bingo? Every what if we game, play Jenga? Every game she's like any game. I've tried getting her drunk to beat her at a game and I can't. She still wins. Under any state, she still I'm just wins. A savage. Yeah. Thank you very much. But but that's not my forte. I, I play the game of life. You know what I'm saying? Which you're good at too, my by the way. But that's my key game. But I will tell you this, but with the kids. I, I truly think that us being the example for them is something that's super important. I think that every parent out there right now, as you're going to tell your kids that they can get whatever they want. They will not believe you if you don't do it also. Yeah, but then um, going back to that, when, before I started joking, I was talking about the competitiveness that we show our kids. Mm -hmm. Like our son truly believes that he is going to be freaking bigger and better than Andy Elliott. No, he facts. believes that he's going to go in. Well, he, he is. I mean, that's that's a no brainer. Well, I mean, he's, he's better looking. He's smart. Yeah. He's setting up, you know, everything. He's 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 a freaking little savage. He's, yeah. Yeah. When he's got the heart of his mom, I don't. He I, has a heart of gold. Yeah. Yeah. He he's got, he's got the heart of gold, but then he's got the savagery of his parents. Well, going back to the heart, I keep changing that. So why don't you like talk about like your childhood and how you used to be, mm -hmm. right? And then how you are now and how that's changed. And now you can see really how you were, you were raised and how mm -hmm. you were as a kid. And you see it with our kids. Like what, what made you, what's the transition so people can understand like that, that journey that you went on. A lot of people know your story and they know that you got pissed off and used to be out of shape. Then you went and you got, you started working out. Mm -hmm. You started working on your mind. You started doing all these different things. They saw that. But what about as a child? Like, what did you live like and how, how has that changed your generational like influence on your kids or our kids? Well, one of the biggest things is, is that I understand what happens when kids get left alone with other kids and there's no parents around, right? What's that mean? Well, so that means my mom left when I was two and my dad growing up, he was always at work. And there's five brothers and sisters and we're always at home, but literally it was kids raising kids. That means, I mean, there's stuff happening in elementary school that's not supposed to be happening in elementary school. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. There's no supervision. Andy there's no Elliott coping. was a slut at what age? Well, it was it was super young, and it was only because you'll you'll do and mirror who you're around and what you're around, and that's where I think most that, of the time. Because well, I was around the same thing and yes. I didn't do it. Well, so I, I remember not having a curfew, running the streets in second grade, you know, being everywhere. And literally, that's just bad. That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And that's not who I wanted to be. That's just the way things operated, right? Um, because, you know, like, that's just, you're, you're going to be who you're around. That's just, you know, you're some of the five people you hang out the most. It's just truth. You're hanging out with these people all the time. This is what's going to happen. You can be as strong as you want, but eventually it's going to happen. And so running around, um, you know, that's, it was all crazy. And then I remember like in fifth or sixth grade, I was a little chunky kid. This happened many times in my life, but I'm a chunky kid. Mm -hmm. And I remember liking girls. Oh, yeah, I like this girl. She was super cute. And she's like, oh, you know, she's like, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend. And then the next day she's like, no, I don't want to be your girlfriend. That guy has um, abs. He has a six pack. And I'm like, what's that? And she's like, his stomach, look. And I'm like, oh, shit. And she's like, I'm going to go be his girlfriend. And I was like, he got his heart broken for the first time. I was like, son of a bitch. So I was like, I need one of those. So I, I started looking up. I remember I bought a muscle magazine 
And I started eating clean food. I ran around the neighborhood every day. I started doing like 500 crunches a day. And then literally by the end of the summer, I had a six pack. And I just remembered I lost all that fat, all my body changed. And then now I could pull all the little girls. And that six pack did change a lot. And then I remember in seventh grade, I liked this girl. And then she cheated on me with another dude. And at that point, I was like, okay, now I'm going cold hearted. Now I'm breaking everyone's heart. Okay, like now I'm going to be a killer. He was an asshole from oh, then until I met him. I was an asshole from seventh grade all the way to 24, 25 years old. Just truly, 26. yeah, 26. Just because I was like, dude, like, like, like no one's ever going to take advantage of me again. Like I'm out. And, and I really think of not having a mom growing up. You remember up, that you told me, oh, uh, just so you know, I have these like crazy ex-girlfriends. They might like try to pop your tires and all this other shit. I'm like, dude, <laughs> nobody's going to do anything to me. Or the only reason why they would is because you're still maybe hinting that there's something going there. On. Yeah. And I was like, nobody's gonna mess with me. I was like, damn, I gotta kill these relationships. <laughs> um, you know, and, and she was the truth. Like Jackie's yeah. always like I was lingering something on. Like it was always crazy. Um, but 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 the biggest thing is is that I think our journey together, right? Mm -hmm. um, we were lost as kids. We've truly grown to to understand each other. As Jackie talks, speaks, does certain things, I understand that Jackie wants love. Jackie needs to be number one. Um, Jackie. That was one of my conditions in the beginning. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you want to be number one, and so do I. And we want to always make sure that we're taking each other into consideration. We always want to make sure that, you know, a marriage is supposed to be special. We're supposed to be examples to our kids. We're supposed to be examples to the world. And we're also not supposed to be fake and act like that we're all supposed to really be that mm -hmm. and um you know and we remind each other of how like we don't want to be frauds and we want to be real and we want to make sure that we're being close all the freaking time and you know like i think that's what's allowed us to have an edge over really most of the world in business um and a lot of stuff because we can communicate about the most difficult craziest hardest topics that most couples can't talk about and we talk about it open and freely daily. Yeah. And, you know, it's not always easy because like sometimes I'm like, damn, I don't want to talk about this. Right. Because it's it, again, there's some hard topics like maybe I really want something to work and she don't want it. So when she doesn't want it and, and I want it, then I'm like, come on, babe. Like, you know, but if but there's really something like future, like really understanding, like there's. There's always something, and, and sometimes you don't see yeah, that's like, what, I what say. can happen we, we, in the future if you did make a decision or whatever. So I basically, I plan future expectations. Well, if this were to happen, if you were going to do this, like you're probably going to see a win on this, but you're going to also see a loss when this comes around. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to make that risk, yes or no? Like you tell me what's more important, this or this? And they're like, well, I didn't think about that. That happens all the time. Yeah, that's what I said. She plays devil's advocate all the time. She's like, hey, I get your point. I see the good in on that. Um, but sometimes but, I do but, it, but even if I want it to, because I want you to really understand yeah. if it's something that you really, really And need I don't like those questions. You know what I'm saying? Well, nobody because, does. because, well, but, but what they've done is saved our ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I love that. And that's why I would tell you guys, make sure that, especially if you're going to build a badass relationship with somebody, that you have, like, we're going to communicate. We can talk about anything. You know, Jackie's my fantasy. She's my wife. She takes care of my kids. I mean, she's the mother of our children. You know, she's my workout partner. She's my business partner. I mean, we're together in faith. I mean, dude, we do everything together. You're the leader of the company. I mean, we, we do like all these things together. And a lot of people run one way with something and then, but they're like, yeah, but we don't do it in that. Mm -hmm. And man, that, I get that. Right. But that just sucks because like, I believe you can do it all with somebody and maybe they're not in the business, but they should still be able to at least talk to you about the business. Well, there's certain trust that they have for certain things. Mm -hmm. Oh, I trust this person with my kids, but would you trust your leaving, you know, or, you know, at work doing like, it's just, there's so many different things that you just have to have like an ultimate level of trust. Yeah. And I think we have that, we, we have with that each threshold other. that's through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could be gone for a year and I'm not worried about nothing. Like everything's good. You know, like that's just the way that we operate. And so it's, it's crazy. And obviously we all go together. I mean, anywhere I fly, you know, the kids go, Jackie goes, we go everywhere. I mean, Jackie goes somewhere we go, we, 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 we travel everywhere almost as a family. And, you know, you get to, what I love with Jackie is you get to build your own life. You get to create your own life. Um, life's whatever you want it to be. 
look, the only rules that you have are the ones that you put on yourself. You know, I mean, yeah, there's a difference between breaking the law and breaking the rules, right? Like we break rules all the time. Who's a bigger risk taker? Well, you used to be, and then I took over and I was the psycho one. And so then when we met, you worked at the same lately, place for over 10 years mm -hmm. in the same position and everything. That's when you're in the car business. When I met you, I had gone through, like I was, I was learning in different things in business and mm -hmm. I got promoted a bunch of times. And I was like, dude, why are you still doing that? Why are you still a used car manager? Like what, what are you doing? So it kind of really pissed you off that I would say that, what are you talking about? Like all my family, I do better than anybody else in my family. You're so mean. Like, well, that's all, the, that, that's all the limiting beliefs. And you know, sometimes you don't understand what life looks like on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I was always like, dude, this is really good. Like, you know, nobody thought I was gonna make it this far yeah. and look how far I've came. Mm -hmm. And by the way, at the end of the day, it wasn't even about loyalty or anything because where I even worked back then, there was no loyalty. It was just a good paying job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I didn't, it wasn't like questioning loyalty. It was like, this is a good paying job. I used to be broke. like. Like, yeah. And I that's a, that's that's the dangerous part because you used to think that a lot. I used to be broke. I'm mm -hmm. better than I was. Yeah. And I think a lot of people look at that. And there's one thing to be grateful, and then there's another thing to push yourself to actually grow, to push yourself to your full potential. And that's been one of our things that I think that I had to in the beginning let you borrow my eyes and show you that you had more potential and mm -hmm. more in you because you were comfortable in that state because you were grateful in a dangerous way. I think that you need to use that gratitude in a good way and also know that God designed you to freaking be powerful and build on and grow and that's mm -hmm. what allows you to be what he designed you to be. And I think a lot of people get that confused in life and I think that that's why they stay you know, doing the same thing for as long as they do and don't grow. You can stay doing, like working at a place forever, just like our people are here, they, they don't plan on going anywhere, but at the same time, they're growing every single day mm -hmm. and reaching new levels and just yeah. going in there, they feel like they're growing in that sense. But there was a time when we were in that, you know, near in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you know, you, you had, you were around certain people that, you know, you didn't, you didn't believe in yourself mm -hmm. and you didn't really know that there was something else. You hadn't even traveled outside of Oklahoma. Well, especially if somebody that you don't directly know has had the kind of success that you're after, mm -hmm. you're trying to think like, well, how, how does that work? You don't feel like you can reach you know what that. I mean? That's for somebody else. It's, it's, yeah, and it's so crazy because once we step back and we took these risks, um, and we made these goals together, mm -hmm. like we started achieving not double what we were doing, but 20 times more. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just so crazy how, if you can get this personal life right, mm -hmm. okay? If you can get the personal life right, if you can become the person that you need to become, and then you can find the right mate to, to become the person that they need to become. And you guys can grow together on the self-development journey how you guys can literally accomplish more than anyone ever imagined, including yourself, your family, or anyone around, and you can continue to keep doing it, yeah. and there's no limit to it. Well, before, you know, in sales, a lot of times that people talk about the actor switch. Hey, you show up, and you have mm -hmm. to basically be a certain way, and we believed that when we were in mm -hmm. sales, like yeah. when we were actually working. If you flip the switch, you, you turn into some person and you go and you can go home and relax and just kind of like, hey, be somebody else, you know, whatever. And then you go to work and poof, turn on the actor switch and you know, hey, this is hunt time. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that as you discover that you love what you do and you love your life, mm -hmm. it all kind of just flows together and that actor switch just disappears because I believe we're the same people yeah. in business than we are with our children. Mm -hmm. We handle our business and our children in our marriage even with the same principle on what we do. Like yeah. we speak directly to each other. We also speak directly to our team. Mm -hmm. We speak directly with our children. We speak directly with our clients. It's just a way of life. It's, it's just a way of life and there's no need for the actor switch. Mm -hmm. And that's when you truly find fulfillment in what you do when you don't have to have that actor switch and you're just who you are. Yep. And that's just, that's just beautiful. That, Cause that's when you know you made it. That's when you know you made it. And also like a lot of times in business, Business. like as an employee you walk around next shows or certain people you don't like or you have to be a specific way or maybe please the wrong people whatever it is you know and then you know even as a business owner you might have the golden handcuffs with the high performing employees or whatever it is you mm -hmm. have those when you feel like you can be you and you don't have to walk around on egg shells in with your in your marriage around your children mm -hmm. at work or whatever it is that you do that's a sense of freedom that is just like you can't compare it with anything Facts. and that's 
the way you find fulfillment in life and you continue to grow and grow and grow. And I think that's what, that's the recipe of success that I think that we discovered as a couple. And that's why we empower each other to just go and get more because we find that fulfillment in that growth. Yeah. If anybody's taking notes, you literally, or maybe you know somebody that's in a relationship, you're like, man, I need to send them this podcast, right? Like I need to send this to them. Like send it to them, I promise you. There's so many gold nuggets and so many bombs that we've dropped, so many um, core values, principles, whatever you wanna call them, standards, um, that we've talked about during this, that literally if you just took 10% of what we talked about and you just add that into a relationship, You're looking mighty vascular. It's over. Am I doing a good job? Yeah, you're actually doing a good job, babe. That's better. better, I like that. Good, you're a good learner. I'm a good learner, see? I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I think you guys will really create a great life for yourself. I think that it'll separate you from everybody else. And I think that, you know, you're powerful when you do things together. Yeah, everything's better. Your together. dreams are bigger, your goals are bigger, your income, your life, everything, yeah. what, you're, what you're capable of. And so we always say, you know, take your family with you. Yeah. You know, so that's important. So I think if anybody, you know, took anything from this, it's just we talked about a bunch of pillars you know, truly, and we don't always just talk relationships, but to, because we love business and we love lots of different stuff. But yeah, we talk a bit about business all the time. Yeah. People say, hey, don't bring business home. Well, we have certain rules, like when we go to bed, don't talk about negative stuff before you go to bed, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and that thing. But sometimes it's good to talk about something that you're doing in business when it's something positive that you have to think about. Because sometimes in my sleep, I'll be like, I know how we're going to do this. Oh, and yeah. then you come up with the best ideas, but you can only do that when you're really truly finding fulfillment mm-hmm. in what you do. Yeah, and it then takes have... it, it takes daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes daily, cons- it's like going to the gym, right? You're gonna get in great shape, you're gonna it's have to muscle. go a lot, you're gonna have to work out a lot, you're gonna have to do it a lot. And that's what we do in our marriage. And I think that we work on our marriage so much um, in all aspects that literally we're, we're extremely fit in our marriage. Yeah, we're about to move and guess what tonight is? We gotta pack. Before the pack. We gotta go to dinner. The date night. Well, it looks like we better in this podcast and get out of here. Yeah. So. But. Uh, I love but no, you, babe. No, thank you. I love you too. Thank Good. you for for being here. Thank you for this. having me on your podcast. Yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a few sentences in. I think we did pretty good. Yeah. Normally, I wouldn't be yeah. able to. Yeah. M- make sure you guys go follow official Jacqueline Elliott on Instagram. If you haven't, um, you need to. She's a badass. She's up and coming. She runs our company. She's been behind the scenes building everything for a long time. And I told her everything that she's taught me, I just teach everybody and everybody's like, damn, I love your shit. And I'm like, dude, she taught it to me. So I was like, I think it's time that you start actually teaching it because you're the one that taught it to me. So love you guys. You're the best, baby. You're the best. High five. Is that what we do now? (laughs) Get your ass over there.